Well, I have to tell you how thrilled I am to be here with all of you, with all of the activists who are going to be out there to deal with the most pressing problem that we have in the United States of America, and that is jobs deficit. Yeah. Jobs. Yeah. Woo! I want to uh, acknowledge a number of the elected officials who have joined me today. I want to thank former Senator and now Committeeman Carol Ronan from the 9th Congressional District. I want to thank State Representative Kelly Cassidy for being here today. Thank you, Kelly. You know, we're expecting Alderman Terry Osterman. I don't know if he's here yet. And I also want to thank City of Chicago Department of Family and Support Services Commissioner Evelyn Diaz for being here today. And I, again, I want to thank all the activists from dozens of organizations that are out here today that are going to be supporting this legislation, spreading the word around not only the Chicago area, but this is part of a national movement right now to create jobs. We have a number of people that are going to be speaking about the importance of this particular legislation that I'm announcing today, and also talk about how important it is that we put people to work doing things that need to be done in our country. I'm so happy to be here at Gowdy Elementary School in my district and want to thank Principal Pamela Grant for hosting us today. when Gowdy was struggling with oversized classrooms and a lack of funding, Secretary of Education William Bennett declared Gowdy, quote, the worst school in America, unquote. And through enormous effort, Gowdy is now an excellent neighborhood school and is the technology And while 96% of the children at Gowdy are low income, its test scores, academic performance, and community spirit are strong and continuously improving. So Gowdy's enormous improvements show that we can solve our problems. We are not helpless in the face of For weeks in Washington, there's been this singular focus on uh, the, the debt ceiling and the oh. debt ceiling crisis that was a manufactured, man-made, or should I say boy-made. Uh, <laughs> uh, but as I said, the worst deficit in this country is not actually the budget deficit. It's the jobs deficit. The growing disparity between the extremely wealthy and all the rest of you, it's the feeling that too many people that have the, have the dream, the American dream in their minds are watching it slip through their fingers. That's a crisis in our country. Right now, nearly 4.5 million Americans have been un... Let me see if I can do something like that. Nearly 4.5 million Americans have been unemployed for more than a year. They and millions of others who are unemployed want to get off the unemployment rolls, roll up their sleeves, and get back to work. And after more than 200 days of being in charge of the House of Representatives, Republicans still have not brought one single jobs bill up for a vote. Some of them are so cynical about our country that they actually see a bad economy as a positive thing if it means that they can defeat President Barack Obama. It is un-American and unpatriotic.
rid of that feedback. Again, I want to emphasize that we are not helpless in, fa in the face of the jobs crisis, and Democrats have been offering solutions to get our people and our economy moving today. Moving. So today, I am announcing the Emergency Jobs to Restore the American Dream Act. Yep. 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 over 2 million people back to work. And how can I guarantee that it's easy? By hiring them. Every penny of this bill must be uh, attached to a specific job that will be created in our economy. For about $230 billion over two years, which is in, in uh, budget terms, not a lot of money, all paid for, it could, it could all be paid for by requiring billionaires and billionaires and rich corporations to pay their fair share. Yeah. 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 And economists tell us that this would lower the unemployment rate by 1.3 percent. So as I said, my bill begins with this simple idea, if we want to create jobs, and create jobs. That's right. I'm not talking about incentivizing companies in the hopes that they'll hire somebody or cutting taxes for the so-called job creators who have done no such thing. That's right. My plan creates new jobs. Here they are. The School Improvement Corps would create 400,000 construction and 250,000 maintenance jobs by funding positions created by public school districts to do needed rehab improvements to the schools in our country. <laughs> we create 100,000 jobs for youth between the ages of 16 and 25. New funding through the Department of Interior and USDA Forest Service Public Lands Corps Act. Young people would work on conservation projects on public land, including restoration and rehabilitation of natural, cultural, and historic resources. Yeah. So we're not creating a new bureaucracy. It's already there. The Student uh, Jobs Corps would create 250,000 more part-time work-study jobs for eligible college students through new funding for the federal work-study program. The Neighborhood, the Neighborhood Heroes Corps would hire 300,000 teachers, 40,000 new public officers, and 12,000 firefighters. <laughs> would hire at least 40,000 health care providers, including physicians and nurse practitioners, and physician assistants, nurses, and health care workers to expand in underserved rural and urban areas, create more access. <laughs> 100,000 jobs in early childhood care and education through additional funding for the Early Head Start program that is right now on the chopping block. And finally, my plan would create a new community core that would hire 750,000 individuals to do needed work in our communities, including housing rehab, weatherization, recycling, and rural conservation. Yeah. Yeah. In various appropriate programs, my plan would give priority for hiring to the unemployed, particularly those who have exhausted their unemployment benefits. Those are, we call the 99ers, and the veterans. These are people who want to work, roll up their sleeves and get to work, but they've been unable to find jobs. It also includes provisions to make sure that the work is additive, that it doesn't displace current workers or local businesses. And so every one of these two million individuals will be doing a job that needs to be done in their communities, cleaning up our towns and our cities and public spaces, and providing vital services to their neighborhoods. With enough teachers and resources to rehabilitate and modernize their facilities, every school can serve its community the way Gowdy Elementary School does. In addition to boost, boosting our economy, the physical results of this type of program will last for years to come. I, I want to cite, this is not a new idea. The 
the Civil Works Administration operated for just a few months in the winter of 1933 to 1934. And during that time, 60,000 buildings were repaired or constructed. Two-thirds of those were schools, and that type of investment in our communities will lay the groundwork for rebuilding the middle class and restoring the American dream. and not a substitute for other great ideas out there, including green jobs proposals, addressing our infrastructure and transportation needs, and creating a dedicated infrastructure bank, further extending unemployment benefits, and providing fiscal assistance to states. I started out by saying the number one crisis in our country is the jobs crisis. But for those of us who care about addressing our long-term fiscal challenges, and I do, I was on the President's National Commission on Fiscal Responsibility and Reform, the Simpson-Bowles Commission. The first step in ending the, uh, the, the terrible problem with the deficit and unemployment is addressing our deficit and putting people back to work. reliance on government assistance in the form of unemployment benefits and food stamps. And by the way, I didn't calculate that into the cost because that reduces the cost of this bill. If you take out the unemployment insurance and some of the uh, programs that people need when they're unemployed, and it will make millions of people taxpayers again, and that's exactly what this crisis and there is a lot of work that we can do and my plan will put us back on the right track to getting Americans back to work, to strengthening our economy and investing in our communities. I need your help to do that and I'm counting on you to help make this bill a reality. and mayor of the village of Skokie, George Van Dusen, who can talk about how the bill benefits municipalities. Thank you, George. For being here. Thank you, Representative Sikowski, for your representation on all issues, but most particularly on our vision deficit. Yes. The United States needs vision and a pathway to assure us that we will reach a full employment and prosperity. This bill helps us accomplish that goal. It wasn't that long ago that Democrats and Republicans were able to come together to create programs to address unemployment. The representative referred to the New Deal. More recently, the Congress created federal revenue sharing the Community Development Block Grant Program. Some of you may remember the old CETA program. Mm -hmm. All of these programs in their time were successful and prevented us from getting into a ditch. Today, we need to lift ourselves out. President Clinton, with Republican support, passed a COPS program that provided for 100,000 police in all of our municipalities across the country. Across the board, local communities, our municipalities have had to cut back on services due to a loss of federal and state funding, as well as a dramatic drop in local revenues. Representative Schakowsky's bill will help us meet some of our critical needs by providing funding to hire 40,000 new police, 12,000 new firefighters, create a community development job corps, as well as a public health corps. Some municipalities, like mine, we have a health department. We provide critical vaccinations and other services to our residents. We need additional employees to meet the needs of our unemployed in our communities. 
I thank the Congresswoman for introducing the Emergency Jobs to Restore the American Dream Act. We all need to dream again and have confidence that our federal government is on our side, putting people to work, putting people to work not only helps new workers take care of their families, but it turns unemployed workers into taxpayers, which will only help to revive our local communities. America's communities need the support that this bill will provide. Thank you, Congresswomen, for your leadership. And I look forward, along with everybody here today, to working with you to achieve the American dream. Thank you. And now, I'd like to introduce Janet Edberg, a former factory worker, currently unemployed. She has exhausted her 99 weeks of unemployment benefits. She needs a job. Yeah. Woo! Thank you. Oh boy, do I need a job. Uh, yes, I exhausted my benefits, and I've been staying with a friend for close to a year now because I had lost my apartment back in uh, November. And it's getting to the point that my uh, my money that I got from my unemployment is almost at an end. So that means I'm going to be homeless. If that isn't frightening for not only me, but for all the Americans who are going through this, now we got to step in and step up and stop this from going on and have this bill passed. There's got to be something done. Thank you. We can do better than that, can't we? Ina Allen is next. She's a music teacher at Shute School in Evanston. She has been teaching for 34 years and is a member of the Illinois Education Association, talking about the need for funding for teachers. Good morning, Congresswoman Schakowsky and all of you here who support fairness for jobs and especially education. Um, I represent the Illinois Education Association, which represents more than 130,000 educators across the state of Illinois. I would like to thank Congresswoman Schakowsky for sponsoring this Emergency Jobs to Restore the American Dream Act and for being a champion of children and working families across the country. The real crisis in this country that this country faces is jobs. Nearly 14 million people are out of work. Most have been searching for a job for more than nine months, and 4.4 million have been unemployed for more than a year, which you just heard from one. This legislation will create and save jobs, and therefore will help steer our economy back to fiscal strength and restore the American dream for struggling, working families. It would also make major investments to improve our schools and educate our children because it includes $100 billion for school districts to create 400,000 construction jobs and 250,000 maintenance jobs to rehabilitate, modernize our nation's public schools. Yeah. Children will win under this bill because it will prevent their teachers from being laid off and therefore will keep us moving in the right direction towards those things we know will improve student learning, like smaller class sizes. Yeah. Making schools greener, safer, cleaner, and healthier will benefit the learning environment for millions of students. It will also put hundreds of thousands of people to work, including those in construction and industry with a 15% unemployment rate just this past June. This legislation creates an environment where students succeed. Therefore, not only do we create more jobs, but it is an investment in our future. In addition, the bill includes $40 billion to rehire and hire and prevent layoffs of thousands of teachers like me, who form the backbone of our education system. Yeah. Yeah. 
and teacher jobs will make a huge difference. This legislation helps establish strong public schools for our children. Good public schools are the foundation for strong communities and a vibrant economy. Finally, this bill also creates 100,000 jobs in early childhood care and education through Early Head Start. It will put thousands of people back to work while giving a boost to kids who need it so that they are ready. Congressman Zikowski, we stand with you because you have stood with children and public education. You supported the education jobs bill that kept educators in the classroom. You pushed for increased funding for IDEA. And you have been on the front lines fighting for working families and have protected their constitutional right to have a voice in the workplace. The membership of IEA thanks you and we also thank you for sponsoring the Emergency Jobs to Explore the American Dream Act. Thank you very much for your support. Thank you so much, Anna. I do also want to mention that we have representatives of the Chicago Teachers Union who are here today. Yay. And I thank them for being here. sophomore at George Washington University um, to talk about how the bill benefits young people. Thank you, Congressman Chikoski. As a college student, I see the difficulties that students must go through to pay for a quality education in the United States. With the job pool that's full of experienced adults, fewer part-time, seasonal, and full-time positions are available for the youth and students. The United States, at one point in time, was a bastion of scientific thinking. We are the only country that put a man on the moon, and that is because of the education system that our country has provided for its students. With less and less people being able to afford a college education, our ability to produce the next generation of innovators is diminishing. Work study is one of these programs that allows for students to gain on-the-job experience while being able to pay for college at the same time. Through the Student Job Corps and Jan's bill, 250,000 additional part-time work-study jobs for college students will be created by new funding for this federal work-study program. In my school, George Washington, I have plenty of friends who are relying on this program to pay for their education. Some of these people are gonna be the next journalists. These are the people you'll see on CNN, the next engineers, the next diplomats. This is the future of America here. And these are the kinds of people that are reliant. That are reliant on programs like this study. However, though, college students do not represent all of America's youth. And do not represent all the young adults who decide to start earning a living right out of high school. In this economy, it has been extremely hard for young adults to find jobs. Through the Parks Improvement Corps, an additional 100,000 jobs will be created as a means to get and rebuild crumbling park infrastructure and make American communities stronger. At a time when teen unemployment is 17%, this is a thing that gets young adults on their feet and gives them jobs that they otherwise would not have. These are the kinds of jobs that have always brought America back from ditches from the problems that we've had. It doesn't take a certain party to show you this, that, that job creation is something that needs to happen. I mean, we had this under FDR in the New Deal. Ike, a Republican, he did it with the National Highway Program. This is not a partisan issue, and I don't see why it should continue to be a partisan issue. Thank you very much. Don't you feel more confident in the yeah. future? Yeah. Yeah. Woo! It's amazing. Um, I'd like to introduce Debbie Atkins, a respiratory therapist from Oak Forest Hospital. And our need, and I don't think I need to explain that to anybody for more. Yeah, I can. Workers. When he moved. Over. and I'm a respiratory therapist at Oak Forest Hospital. It's a part of the Cook County Health and Hospital Systems. Uh, 
there have been many service, severe service reductions in service at Oak Forest Hospital. Hundreds of employees have been laid off and more stand to be laid off given the federal and state reduction of funding public hospitals. Providing access to timely, quality health care is a part of our American dream. Cutting needed health care workers not only means people can't find care, but it adds to the number of unemployed Americans who will put a strain on our public hospitals, clinics, and doctors who are already understaffed. Representative Schakowsky's bill will provide funding to restore these jobs and hire at least 40,000 health care providers, from physicians to doctors to CNAs, PCAs, to health technologists and technolo technicians. And we thank her and we look forward to fighting with her to get this bill passed. Thank you. Rodriguez, who is the Director of Program Services, Office of Employment and Training at the Illinois Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity. Thank you, Julio, for being here. Good morning, everybody, and I want to thank you all for coming out, and on behalf of our Director, Warren Ripley, and our Deputy Director, Therese McMahon, we're very excited and are very grateful that we have leadership in Washington and here in our community. I'm actually... Um, Congresswoman, one of your residents and one of your constituents. So I'm all equally proud just to be here and know that my representative is taking the lead on this. The Emergency Jobs to Restore the American Dream Act, sponsored by Congressman Joukowsky, would provide much needed resources to leverage against our current workforce investment dollars. DCL is excited about the opportunity to work with the representative on this important initiative. This legislation comes out now at an important time when we're seeing all kinds of cuts in our federal programs and state programs. Funding would provide the, under the American Recovery Act, which is now ending, help to provide successful programs in a lot of the areas that this bill outlines. The WIA Workforce Investment Act funds the Title I, clearly align very closely to the goals of this particular bill. We think it's a great opportunity to really leverage existing resources with new resources. And that's really what we need in this country. We need to begin to leverage the investments we've already made against new investments. For example, in 2009 and 2010, the department used ERA funds to establish a partnership with the Natural Resources Department here in the state. We created youth employment opportunities in state parks for nearly 500 youth. The examples of how we can leverage our state funding with federal funding is just one way that this bill will continue to expand on that. Under the era fundings and the recovery funds, we were able to partner with hospitals, uh, healthcare facilities, and community clinics to really restore and to bring new people into the healthcare fields. We really believe that healthcare provides great opportunities, but you need people to be trained in those jobs so that they have a future and a career path in that opportunity. The Community Course Initiative that is established under this legislation would help to fulfill another big goal within the department, which is to really begin to expand both in rural and urban communities the success of building um, success, um, community gardens and really looking at how do we address food deserts in our communities. We think this can be a really great opportunity to build on some initiatives that we've done in the department across the state. Um, we commend Congressman Chikowski for her efforts to help put Americans back to work. This important legislation will not only help us do that, but it helps us to sustain the efforts that we've already begun to really build a workforce that's ready for the future. Finally, we believe that these efforts will continue to expand Illinois' ability to be competitive in a global economy. And we thank uh, Congressman, uh, Congressman Chikowski for her efforts and her leadership. So we have choices, my friends. We don't have to cut Medicare and Medicaid and Social right. Security. Woo! We don't have to cut programs for persons with disabilities. We don't have to take food away from hungry children by cutting the WIC program. We don't need to, to destroy job training programs. 
we can do what we need to do to rebuild the middle class, to stop the income disparities, and to keep the United States of America economy strong in a competitive world, as Julio said. Yeah. So now I'd like to take questions from the, uh, from the, the, the media. Anybody? We answered it all? Yes. Me? Uh, yes. From the media. Are you? Oh, still, I'm not from the media. Oh, questions from the media, yes. This would beg a tax increase that's seemingly completely verboten in Republican control Republican House. What real chances are you to do the House? You know, the. Actually, the, uh, two, the two to one, the American people are saying that the that jobs are more important than debt reduction. This bill does not include in it my proposals for how we could pay for it, although I also have the Fairness and Taxation Act, which adds new brackets. for legislation like, like this. But because the American people, two to one, believe that the real issue is jobs, I am relying on the voice of the American people to make the difference, to make this legislation a reality, to make the pay for, asking the wealthiest Americans and corporations to pay for legislation like this. Because we cannot simply cut our way out of this deficit. In fact, that will cause more unemployment, more pain, and bring our legislation and to bring to their senses some of my colleagues and I believe that some of them actually would like to do the wrong the, the right thing and are and are right now being held hostage by a minority of, uh, of people called the the tea partiers in the Congress well when do you expect to formally introduce this? We expect in the next couple of weeks to have all the legislative language done to enshrine in the, the right words all of the principles that you have in this uh, in this legislation. Um, you know, it's a somewhat complicated bill to write. But the idea is very simple. It should be ready to be introduced um, by the time we get before we get back to uh, to business in Washington in September. Anything else? Okay, yes. What can we do about the unfair trading policy that we have that's destroying the manufacturing industry? Thank you. Yeah. Well, we're going to have, gonna gonna have debates on, uh, on, on the uh, trade bills. I know that most Americans, including me, think that uh, our trade deals have actually uh, made it harder for workers both in our country and often in the country that we're doing the, the trade deals with. I am not supportive of the current free trade agreements that are that are on the table. Yes. Not, not in this